It's <coughs> Calcat the Calcaster. Welcome to the Calcat Reviews Channel 800th episode, which is a review. Uh, it's now 800 episodes uh, on this channel. Uh, the other other has 320 something. Um, Chimera Channel has 25 or something. Not as many. Not nearly as many. Um, yeah. So there's there's other ones too, but. 800 episodes, so I'm not through sitting at the screen or do anything other special other than watching a cheesy sci-fi movie that I haven't seen. So I decided to watch Zardos on Amazon Prime. You can rent that there on Amazon Prime. Um, uh, we're not, we're not, uh, yeah, we're not associated with Amazon Prime, just have it. Yeah, it's not a sponsor or anything. Um, this 1974 movie with Sean Connery running around in a in a red codpiece loincloth for most of it, and then later on in a toga outfit. Because uh, the late Sean Connery, um, yeah, he's, he's, this is on his resume right after he did the James Bond movie. So. Uh, he decided to do this weird sci-fi trippy movie that in the trailer likened itself to 2001 A Space Odyssey. It, th it was that pretentious that I thought it was, it was that movie from a few years earlier. It is not. Um, it's, I can see why MST3K didn't do this movie. They would have had to cut out all the booby shots and, and all the, the deaths at the end. But, uh, but yeah, um, Zardos. Uh, yeah, the, the premise is that it's the year 2299, a dystopian future, often very similar to a lot, a lot of 50 sci-fi books were about dystopian futures, and matriarchies, and women leading the, the matriarchy, and and, and stuff like that. And th there was a lot of movies like The Valley of the Dolls, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, uh, uh, yeah, um, and, yeah, other things. Um, it's found that it funny that, like, uh, this particular one we have, uh, uh, it's almost a post feminist thing because it was, well, the 70s would have been early feminist, but it's like post feminist because uh, it kind of makes fun of that. Uh, there's also plenty of uh, thrown in odd misogyny. Uh, pss, uh, the, the, the watching Sean Connery running around acting weird is uh, not uncommon. Uh, he did in some of his later movies. Uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, uh, The Rising Sun, um, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit weird now. Um, but uh, the Avengers, the original British Avengers show movie. That, that movie was not the, not the Marvel one, the British one with uh, five people in all of London. And the spies dressed in the bear suits. Yeah, um, Sean Connery looking like he's really, really high. I don't know if he was, but everybody else was. Here's a, here's a picture of him. <laughs> well, yeah, um... Uh, so you have this dystopian society that's ruled by these floating godhead things called Zardoz. They're flying around through individual vortexes. In this case, they mean vortexes in crystal and lattices and stuff. Uh, I don't know how they would get all of what they had in there, but sure. Our opening, our, our protagonist, uh, Sean Connery's character, Zed, finds a way to like, uh, he finds a way to get into the into one of the Zardos heads after the Zardos spits out a bunch of guns to give to the hunters the, 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 the brutals like in the um, after he does that, for some reason they have guns and bullets like 200 years from now they, they still make them Who, who's making them uh, even, even when they go to the other city there's no evidence that anyone's building anything new that's beyond say like millstones and stuff baking ovens and things. They made the oven look futuristic, but maybe they have, like, replication technology, but they really didn't, yeah. They seem to have unlimited, uh, immortal, immortalized technology. Seems to be a Category 1 civilization trying to be a Category 2 civilization. They mastered all the resources of their planet and, uh, and to use it as a dystopian future. Oh, uh, this may seem similar to video games such as uh, 
uh, Mass Effect and whatever, um, it may seem similar to a lot of other things. Uh, Bioshock, for instance, is very similar. But that's because they saw this movie, and movies like it, and stories like it. Um, although Bioshock, to an extent, is more like, say, Metropolis from the 30s, than this, which is even earlier. Um, in some ways, steampunk kind of thing. Um, so you have, uh, um, yeah, you have people in, well, people in togas or naked walking around. So that's that's nice in the '70s. You got that going on. Um, if you try to make a movie like this uh, today, it would be rated NC-17 immediately just because of all the boobies. But uh, but it was horror back then, just horror. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, you can't see people having fun, having, having, showing off their sexuality. Um, yeah, I can't do that in a movie. Uh, they have to be, they have to be, they have to be killing each other or raping each other or something. And then the you know, MPAA is like okay with that horrible stuff. But not with sex. Sex. What's hilarious is that the god creature in the beginning says, says, guns are good, penis is evil. <laughs> And all this is going to be a fun ride. Oh, uh, this is hilarious. Um, uh, it wasn't hilarious, though. There were, there were parts that were hilarious, but un un unintentionally so. You could tell the uh, director was trying to be deep. He was trying to do 2001, but with the, 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 you know, the whole deep the metaphysical stuff uh, common in that time period. Also, if anybody from Jung Swan back in the day watched this movie, they probably wouldn't stay at Jung Swan. They would have been like, oh, is this like a cult? Oh, I don't like that. Oh, uh, but yeah, uh, but, but yeah, uh, <laughs> or if anyone did Scientology, they wouldn't like that either, or any of those other numbers of, of things, um, it would warn them away from, from godheads and things, they, they seemed fascinated with that idea about a physical floating godhead thing, uh, very similar to Vol in Star Trek a few years earlier on the classic Trek, like Kirk destroys the Vol creature, and, whatever. and there's a bunch of other ones that he destroys. You destroy the Godhead. Ooh. Um, they do imply that they went to other planets and that they had other planets, but they came back to Earth. Uh, they, they became immortal for 200 years. It's only been 200 years since they, the dark time happened. It would have been 2099, roughly. Not sure what that was. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, it was probably supposed to be 1999, and they just added it right. The year 2000, no, no, uh, that's probably what they were really referring to, but because they said 2299 in the credits, they kind of screwed that up by like a, a millennium. It's supposed to be the millennium is going to destroy them. Uh, like, yeah, they, they, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my movie better than, than Battlefield Earth, the, the book from the 70s. Um, not the movie. The Battlefield Earth movie actually is worse than this, um, but at least it's more, it's more funny. Uh, this movie does have a lot of uh, uh, exploitation elements, giallo elements, especially near the end. Um, the uh, giallos are Italian cinema, they're horror cinema. So it's a yellow, the yellow movie is a horror. Yeah. The yellow movie. Um, uh, but yes, uh, here would be the red movie, I guess. The blue movie, of course, would be porn. The blue movie. So. Um, yeah. So they have uh, uh, Sean Connery running around and grunting and doing things, and they discover a group of of them are the, the apathetics. Apparently, the wealthy elite in this society found a way to build a cage to put themselves in, and then watch it, all of society die around them. That's how it's similar to um, uh, similar to the. Uh, Bioshock, in that they that same thing happens at Bioshock. They build a dystopian society out there, up in the clouds, and then they kind of do their thing, leave everybody else behind. Uh, so that's how it's similar. Uh, it's also similar to any number of other things from that time period. They, they thought they were being trippy and different, but they weren't. Uh, they, 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 it's sort of like, it's sort of like you know, when you're in the middle of when you're in the middle of. Uh, of a trend, you think the trend is you. You think you're the only one that thought of it. Uh, in the early 2000s, dyeing your hair a certain color was like a, a, a trend. 
discovered by one of my nephews. I'm going to dye my hair a funny color when I go to junior high, honey. Shows up at junior high. Everybody's doing it. He gets all pissed off. He's like, damn. Did the same color and everything. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, because they'd already thought of it. Like, you didn't take it. And in the age, of, now that it's the internet, now it's like 20 years, it's like 15, 16 years later from that, from that incident. It's like, now the internet, you know instantly when a fad and a trend happens because you can just go and search for it. Don't make that mistake. But this movie was way before that. And they didn't have the internet and they didn't have computers, so they had to kind of, kind of like make things up. The early PCs had started at that point, but they were like clunky and early and, and big. In the 70s, I think the first Apple computers were in the in 75, somewhere around there. 70, 70, there was probably an early, early one before that, but they didn't go into mass production for houses such as the Apple II and the Apple IIe probably until 78, a little bit later. Um, and then they were used in schools for many years up until the mid-80s. Um, and then phased out, and then Macintosh came in uh, in, the, in the 80s as well. So we had Macintosh and then them. And, but yeah, they, they didn't have the technology. So when they, they tried to simulate a computer in this, it was a crystal display screen with a thing. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, uh, they kind of predicted something in terms of television in this movie without, by accident, purely by accident, uh, a liquid crystal displays. The kind that are used on this monitor screen or televisions or whatever. A liquid crystal display. Uh, like uh, they, they kind of predicted in the movie. They kind of predicted uh, uh, the flash memory devices in a way, which is kind of cool. That how uh, they could store the memory on the crystal thing, and it was really small. It kind of that's what they were thinking. Of. Yeah, put the whole library, their whole computer, on this little little drive thing. <laughs> It's in the crystal world I'm going to fight in. Oh, and it's like 2001 in that near the end he goes inside a trippy kaleidoscope place in a crystal and, and goes around floating around in the DNA. And stuff. The DNA is just like shots of like, it's not DNA, it's shots of uh, random bugs and stuff in a petri dish that they've blown up, which is clever, but that's not DNA. <laughs> they didn't have an electron microscope around to make the movie accurate. Uh, they didn't have CG. It was 1974. Uh, yeah, the, uh, they didn't quite have that stuff yet. Uh, they, in 2001, it was all practical models. A Space Odyssey. It's 1969, 2001, A Space Odyssey. It was all practical models. In, in effect and stuff. Some of them almost to scale. Like the ring that he runs around in. Some of them almost to scale. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but in this movie, yeah, they used a they filmed it in Scotland, apparently. In the Scottish Highland movies. He would later go on to st he would later go on to be in other Scotland movies, including including Li um, Lionheart and uh, Dragonheart. Yeah, so, as a dragon. So he got, went back to that studio to do Dragonheart. <laughs> uh, at the end, he uh, near the end of the movie, he does get away with the with the girl, and then they. And they have a kid, and they show the passage of time, and then they die like the two uh, in the classic uh, discovery of the of the, the lovers that they found. It's a throwback to that. They like die holding hands. Uh, yeah, um, uh, that's that old uh, old uh, excavation over there from that time period. Uh, but yeah, that, that's. But yeah, uh, spoilers. Why not? It's 1974 that it came out. Um, so, so the dysto the utopia that was constructed becomes a dystopia because yeah, there's haves and have-nots. Uh, they have mental powers to an extent. They have aura powers because of the '70s. But he had psychic powers and chakras and chi and all that stuff. Yeah, they could like look at you and nobody really did, but everyone thought they did because it was a mass hallucination or mass hypnoti hypnotization of them uh, to make them think that uh, uh, massive amounts of fraud um, even even cousins that were uh, uh, distant cousin was Sylvia Brown so there you go <laughs> yeah she was definitely a flim flam artist yes um, but she did discover the haunted Toys R Us that I later went to and said nope it's not um, <laughs> But in 2012, I did freak out some of the job club people. Slightly gullible about that. 
<laughs> so, oh, I just went there and saw the ghost. Oh, really? No. Okay. <laughs> of course not. It wasn't a ghost. It was like the toy was set up to turn itself on when you walked by. Um, but yeah, uh, that was it. Was a trick. It was a parlor trick, just like any kind of psychic would be a parlor trick. Um, <laughs> yeah. The psychic palm reader that's next to the comic shop. Ew, like I, I commented on the palm reader next door, and the palm reader happened to be in the comic shop. She, like, oh, and it was like, well, how would you know I was coming? You should have, you're psychic. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> you're psychic, you know I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come into the room, right? Anyway, so apparently you're not. <laughs> Oh, uh, but yes, um, so yeah, the joke of this movie was that he's the perfect specimen. Sean Connery's the perfect specimen of man. <laughs> um, <laughs> what the, okay, I mean, he was, he was the sexiest man alive at the time, but my, but yeah, there's a lot of weird undertones in this movie. There's, there's misogyny disguised as, as chicks running around. I wonder if, like, like. Zack Snyder thought he was doing something like this when he made Sucker Punch. Because there's a little bit of that. The idea that scantily clad women are actually powerful and in their minds they're more powerful. And all. I think this movie did a better job of it than Sucker Punch did. Because it made them actually have powers. They, they actually developed mental powers and were immortals and stuff. They actually had them. And see, that was the thing that would have made that Sucker Punch movie make more sense. You see, it's another movie. Yeah, but many, many years later, uh, had they escaped the asylum using their powers, then it would have been like, okay, that's, that's, that, that would have been empowering. In the case of this movie, they kind of have a similar escape planned. Uh, he uses the mutant, the mute, mute people, the, the apathetic people, I guess. Probably thinking of autistics, but no, autistics aren't apathetic. They just are slow with figuring people out. So they're not apathetic. It's not that they're... No, that would be something else. That would be... Uh, that would be, like, a uh, sociopath of some kind. That's different. <laughs> that wouldn't be that. Uh, clearly, they were some sort of... Uh, the the, uh, the uh, bad guys were some sort of... Some sort of psychopaths as well. In a different form. Um, all these mental things are going on there. Uh, Jungian crossed in with Freudian... With other stuff. Um, in the movie. Uh, what's odd is there wasn't a single person that wasn't white in this movie. So it's kind of messed up and racist. A little bit Lovecraftian going on. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> society was all all the white. This is kind of odd. Um, even the bad guys, they were white too. <clears throat> so what? Uh, they did go to a planet at some point. And of course, Zardos gets his name from the title Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz, yes. Uh, which is which would only work if the aliens spoke English, I like Br British English, like otherwise it wouldn't. I know after only two hundred years, language doesn't evolve that much, but given the way they set up the story, it would have. Um, oh, uh, yeah, like like when you look at stuff from even like eighteen hundreds writing, it's really weird. King James you're writing it. Look at that stuff. It's like thee and thou and forsoothith and whatever. What are they talking about? I can't understand them. But yes. Um, oh, and then you go back to Shakespeare's time and then you have them talking like, Oh ye, I can pair thee to summer's day. That were more lovely and more temperate. Which you can kind of understand, but it's kind of odd. And then, or to be or not to be, that is the question. The bear bodkin or whatever. You know, what is a bodkin? It's a knife. Anyway, <laughs> unsheathed knife. Um, but yes. Uh, or, or you go further back to Chaucer in the 13th century, and then you end up with, like, like, April suit the suit of May, and right the suit and here, the non the priest that tells. It's like, ah, what did he say? <laughs> Something about April and the, the non priest tale. Uh, yeah. Um, actually, Chaucer came up with the idea. Chaser, Chaucer is one of the originators of Cupid from uh, from uh, from the, the Cupid myth, actually. One of the originators of He's making fun of it. <laughs> but yeah, he's like... Uh, 
which Sean Connery's kind of dressed up as a Cupid in the movie running around. Um, but he can't have the sex play because the penis is evil. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I can see why he wanted to be in this movie. So, oh, this movie sounds silly, but, but it has evil godheads. That's kind of weird and silly, but it does have lots and lots of naked women. Or mostly naked. I'll go for it. Mm. Yes, yes. Um, of course. Why not? Hmm. Definitely an exploitation movie of many kinds. Um, pss, strange. Of course, the uh, they do have gay characters in it. Uh, there's a few men in the in the women lady village, the all lady village that are clearly supposed to be gay men that are walking around and they're like, and they're like, well, they allow them in there because they're like gay eunuch dudes. They may not be eunuchs. They may just be gay. But but yeah, they totally they dress like the chicks. But they're guys. They're supposed to be gay guys. So they have that, but they don't have colored, uh, don't black or Mexican or Chinese or anything like that. No, they're all white in that in that village, on that, on that planet. I guess it's supposed to be Earth. It looks like the Scottish Highlands. Highlander is also not Highlander, yeah. Hell yeah. But yeah. Uh, Highlander Cross with this would have been an interesting and strange movie. So they got like Sam Raimi to do it or something. That would have been kind of awesome. But no, it was uh, somebody else. Um, yeah, so movie has a lot of issues, but it was the seventies, and the and the trippy crystal part and the trippy uh, magician guy saying like he, he had actually tricked him into being born. So there was, but then to have the guy turn around and say someone was above you and I. Uh, Commuted with him too. Oh, my world should stop you. Oh. It's like, okay, yeah. I think there were lots of drugs involved in this movie. Like a lot of them were doing drugs. Orgies and, and a mob breaking into the building, setting everything on fire. All that kind of stuff. And I was like, yeah, there. this movie was weird. They were high as fuck. <laughs> they were stoned when they thought this movie out. And then they had the audacity to film it. And not only that, to get a cast of at least a hundred people to run around in practically nothing. Excellent! Some of them wearing weird godhead masks as they shot people with guns. How could they even know what they're shooting? How they just... What was the, yeah, what was the point of giving the barbarians guns? To, that would eventually defeat them. That, yeah, um, L. Ron Hubbard was probably thinking the same thing when he later went on to write Battlefield Earth, and then it became a movie later on, like like twenty five years later, Battlefield Earth the movie, um, but but yeah, um, same idea. It's like you no, know, you don't have the Godhead that's indestructible. Give the barbarians a way to survive, because then they'll defeat you. <laughs> and then there's the other old guy. I guess it's connected to two thousand and one in that there's an old guy at the end that was sort of the creator of the whole thing, and he like he dies regenerated or something. I don't think he got regenerated. He dies, and then they all start to die. Thus the hilarious Mark's Cards ending. A little bit of Cal Cat in there. Uh, in that they all want death because they're mortal, so they tell the barbarians to shoot them. Starting with some... Even though the Connery character doesn't want to shoot the main barbarian lady. Somebody else does. Um, he escapes with the barbarian lady, and then they have a kid later, which would freak her out because she's never had children. Um, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, um, and that weird sequence in there, the crystal fire, it's just nuts. And the, the trippy part where he's in the crystal yelling at things and whatever. And yeah, uh, just, 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 he went into the mind crystal. Oh, oh makes sense. Uh, not really. Look at the crystal ball. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is weird. That one, what they were, they were on all kinds of stuff. Uh, that that movie was not on. That movie was the movie's cast was not just on coke. They were on LSD. They were on all kinds of stuff. At one point, they even simulated it when they were eating the, the special leaves that gave them powers. Like, uh huh, okay, that's not gonna give you powers, it's gonna make you really, really high. Don't do drugs. 
don't do that. Um, <laughs> anyways, the, or, or a movie like this may have ensued. Actually, you don't get more creative if you're on drugs. You get stupider. So clearly the director would have been a little more, less stupid if he wasn't on drugs. But, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it was a mess. MST3K didn't do it, though. I mean, they could have done a debridged version where they just kind of bleeped out the uh, graphic stuff. They could have done it. It would have been funny. We were like, ah, it's a floating head. It's Unicron. Oh, wait. Uh. Contemporary jokes. Um, how did the floating head god thing work? God. I remember parts of this movie from many years ago. I think it played on... I think it played on the Creature Features years ago. I do remember parts of it after I watched it all the way through. I kind of remember some of this stuff. Yeah, I, mean, I kind of remember like the floating rock dude and the guy in the crystals yelling and stuff. Trying to get through the crystal, and, and I remember the magician guy going like, "Ah, oh, the thing." So I've seen this movie a long last time ago, ruining pieces of it. Like, where did that come from? And then I saw it now. I was like, "Oh, let's fucking start off." That's where that came from. Okay, because I remember that, that that the whole Wizard of Oz thing. I remember that too. Hmm. It was old school. I probably saw it on a shitty black and white TV when I was like a late teenager. It was a long time ago. <laughs> I saw it colored. Yeah, so. <laughs> huh. I think you can also buy Zordaz if you wanted to. Uh, yeah, just rent it. <laughs> I don't think YouTube has it for free, but you can probably find people that rent it. Um, yeah, you could now with Sean Connery having passed away, they, they could do like a they like bring this one out, a number of other ones, put them out. Moral thing, um, but yeah, um, his immortal character. Yeah, how, how are they gonna teach their kid? Did they just stay there in the cave the whole time? So the implication is they just remain there. And then it seeded the world again because they were Adam and Eve, basically. They only had one kid, though. Anyway, at the end. Uh, so it wasn't exactly like 2001. Not exactly. Um, the, director, the, the guy doing the commercial just thought it would be fun to say that. I think it was, yeah, there are some elements that are similar, but no, it, it's not. Anyway, this was the 800th episode, and I reviewed Sardos. Yeah, the episode, I'm gonna throw some candy bits at the screen, but, you know. Anyway, so, uh, I'm fine, uh, 800th episode. Go catch up. Ah, ah, ah.